Elizabeth Wayne. You are charged on an indictment containing four counts, the first of which alleges that on the 21st day of September 1958, being servant to the Allison Engineering Company, you stole 450, 540 national insurance stamps, their property. Are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. On the second count, you are charged that on the 14th day of October 1958, in the same county, you stole a cigarette lighter and a compact, the property of Jane Collins. I've often been asked, how big a part does luck play when one is defending or prosecuting in a criminal case? How much depends on playing a hunch? Well, of course, the answer, as you might expect, is sometimes nothing at all and sometimes a very great deal indeed. And if ever luck or the lack of it came into a case, it certainly came into the case of Elizabeth Wayne. Now, there are some people who just love playing at cops and robbers, although they should go to the police in the very first case. And Mr. Morley, the cashier of the Allison Engineering Company, was just one of those people. Morning. Mr. Morley. What is it? All the insurance stamps have gone. Nonsense, Miss Wayne. They can't have done. Where'd you put them on Friday night? Well, in here, like I always do. How many were there? Well, over 500. I only got the new batch on Friday. Let me look. Well, they're gone, certainly. Well, shall I phone security? Yes, yes, of course. Switchboard. Security, please. And I'll put you through. Security. Bolton. Hey. Eh? Hey, when? How many? Well, I'll take up and it'll be long in a few minutes. Bye. What's up? Who's on last night? I was, me and Mike. Why? Hundred quid's worth of insurance stamps missing to the cashier's office, that's why. You or Mike see anything? Not a thing. It was all serene in there when I checked. I don't know about Mike. Well, this is the twelfth pilfering in six weeks. I mean, this goes beyond pilfering. All from offices of cloakrooms and all unsolved. Now, if this goes on, we're going to lose our jobs. No great loss at that. Oh, not few, perhaps, but I've got a pension coming up. There's no reason why it should have been taken last night. Any of the Sunday shift could have done it during the day. The cashiers would have been closed. You'll call the fort when I get back, will you? I'm going to see Morley. It has to be Morley, doesn't it? Meddling so and so. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's all very well, Mr. Fordyce. The whole point is nothing's being done about it at all. And this thieving has been going on for a long time. Oh, not only the stamps, but handbags, wallets, cigarette lighters, and 101 other things as well. And the security officers have done absolutely nothing whatsoever. Then have I your authority to put the idea up to them? Yes, but... Uh, uh, very well. Thank you, Mr. Fordyce. Yes, I I'll send them to you immediately. Goodbye, sir. Get me security again, Miss Wayne. No, no, don't bother. This may be him. Ah, oh, come in, Bolton. I was trying to get you. I got Miss Wayne's message, so I came as soon as I could. Oh, well, never mind. What are you going to do about this? Is the drawer the stamps were taken, sir, same as last time? Yes, it is. The key of the cash box being left at the drawer and the key of the drawer in the cupboard? Yes. They didn't do what I suggested after last time, sir, and keep it in a sensible place with sensible precautions. The petty cash box has been kept in that drawer in the same place during the 20 years I've been here. I saw no reason to alter it. If you people did your job properly, this sort of thing wouldn't happen, even if the box were kept in the open. You could do a job more effectively, sir, if people cooperate with us a little. Are you referring to me? Not especially, sir, but the staff in general can't expect the security section to do its job properly if they persist in leaving valuables in coat pockets or in wash basins or in desk drawers, sir. Be that as it may, over a hundred pounds worth of insurance stamps are missing. What do you propose doing about it? Staff will be questioned, so as far as possible, and routine inquiries will be set in motion. Routine inquiries, as you call them, presumably being what you are still conducting on all the other incidents, sir. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, they don't seem to got you very far, do they? Not very far yet, sir, I admit. And isn't it about time you did something more about it? Now, what more do you suggest we do, sir? A bit of a third degree, running over with a rubber hose? Talk sense, Mr. Morley, for crying out loud. No need to be offensive, though. No, I don't mean to be offensive, sir, but you don't seem to be able to see our side of it at all. The firm won't call in the police. All we can do is make inquiries the best we can, and there's a payroll of over 2,000, as you should know, sir. I'm fully aware of that, Bolt, and I know the difficulties you work on. Now. I'm merely suggesting you try some other methods within the limited powers that you have. Then what do you suggest, sir? Well, as a matter of fact, when you came in, I'd just been discussing it with the chairman, 
and he agreed with certain reservations that this situation requires special measures, and I have his authority to put a scheme to you. As a matter of fact, it was partly his idea. Uh, you mustn't think I went to him behind your back or anything like that. Oh, of course not, sir. Uh, good. Uh, now, the chairman's suggestion is this. That'll be all for the moment, Miss Wayne. Right, Mr. Morley. Now, it seems fairly obvious that when this hullabaloo has died down, this man, whoever he is, will have another shot at this office, either for the stamps or petty cash or something. And we felt, at least the chairman felt, that perhaps a simple trap could be arranged that I could set when I lock up at night or for the weekend, as something in the way of a hidden camera which takes a photograph directly the drawer is opened. Or better still, a few seconds after the drawer is opened. You know the sort of thing I mean? Yes, sir, I know the sort of thing. Excellent. Well, the chairman wants to talk to you about the thefts generally. He no doubt will elaborate on the idea. Yes, sir. Well, I mustn't keep you from the chairman. I'm sorry I spoke so sharply just now, but it's all been deeply disturbing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understand. Well, the chairman's famous trap was duly laid, and two months went by. Petty thefts continued around the premises at odd times in odd places, but never a sniff at the cashier's office. Until one Monday morning, there was the drawer ransacked again, and the trap sprung. It's Miss Wayne, sir. Yes. As our girl were right, Miss Wayne, it is. I'd never have thought it possible. The old man's secretary, too. He'll go mad. And she always seems such a nice kid. You know, the longer you this log, Bob, the more you realize anyone can surprise you. Anyway, we're well out of it. The police job from now on. I thought they didn't want the police brought in. Oh, no, the first catcher. Yeah, it's up to the Rosses to cook her. Yeah, give me a line, please. Well, those are the essential facts of the case, Mr. Boyd. And as I told you yesterday, Histon newspapers have taken up the defense of this girl. Yes, you tell me, but you didn't tell me why, Mr. Tickle. Tickle. Oh, I beg your pardon. We're running it on a national network, you know, on the lines of small employee being put upon by a large concern, big business versus the little man. In this case, the little woman. Yes. I believe I told you, did I not, that the police solicitors decided not to prosecute owing to lack of evidence, and the company itself brought a private prosecution. Yes, really. Well, we feel that what the company wants to find is merely some scapegoat for these thefts in order to save their face against the indignation of their employees. Yes. Will you have another drink? Thank you, yes. The case will get a great deal of publicity, at any rate, from us. I couldn't care less about the publicity. Oh, no, I realize that, of course. But uh, Lord Histon asked me to remind you what he said to you at dinner two weeks ago, that it never did anyone any harm, did it? Not even a member of the bar. He said that, did he, the old devil? Look, this isn't just a newspaper gag, is it? Uh, Histon really believes that the girl has been victimized. Yes, he does. What about you? I think so, certainly. Seen the girl? Yes, twice. Have you got a brief ready yet? Not with me. It's not quite complete, I'm afraid. I have her outside, in case you'd like to see her. The main object of my visit to you tonight, Mr. Boyd, is to ask you, on behalf of Lord Histon, to uh, undertake this defense. Personal request of the great Mogul himself, le roi le veu. Uh, indeed, yes. And I haven't any choice, have I? Jack! I'm very grateful, Mr. Boyd. How's all? Ask Miss Wayne to come in, will you? Very good, sir. Miss Wayne. Come in, Miss Wayne. Sit down. Now then, Miss Wayne, I've been asked by Mr. Tickle here to undertake your defense in this trouble of yours. He, he's given me the rough picture, but I'd like you to answer some questions, if you'd be so good. Well, I'll do my best. Thank you. First of all, what is your job with this um, Allison Engineering Company? I'm personal secretary to Mr. Morley. He's the chief cashier. Or at least I was until I was suspended. Yeah. Uh, and this theft that you're accused of when the photograph was taken took place on a Sunday, did it? Well, yes. Most of them have happened on a Sunday. Why did you go in there? The, the, the cashier's office isn't open then, surely? Well, no, it's not, but well, foolishly I left a birthday present for my mother in my desk drawer and well, I wanted to collect it, that's all. Did you see anyone on the way in? Speak to anyone? Well, I saw the porter and Mr. Bolton was there too. Who's Mr. Bolton? Uh, uh, he's the security chief of the works. Yes, I see. So you just went in, up to your office and then left? Yes, that's right. On the way out, did you tell anyone what you'd done? Well, I may have done. Who? May you have told. Well, anyone. I, I don't know. Did you know about this photographic trap? No, I didn't. Who would have known about that? Well, I suppose management would have known, and security, but that's about the lot, I imagine. 
The point is, did you tell anybody that you'd opened the drawer that contained the insurance stamps and operated the camera? It's an awful long time ago. I, I can't remember offhand. Well, Miss Wayne, you must try and do better than this, you know. These vague answers won't help you in court. Oh, I'm sorry. I try and remember. All right. Well, now, can you tell me this? When you opened the drawer, was the cash box intact and everything as it should have been? Yes, it was, and it was still there when I left. I didn't steal anything. Why didn't you say so immediately when the police came to you? Because my solicitor told me to say nothing. The solicitor? Yes, that's quite right. You say you called in your solicitor before the police came to see you? Well, yes. Why? Because it was perfectly obvious on the Monday what Mr. Morley's attitude was. He wouldn't even let me into the office. And he practically told me that the game was up and that I'd been caught. We didn't say anything about the photograph, but... Well, his attitude was plain enough. I just wasn't taking any chances, that's all. Chances? What? Well, saying the wrong thing. Yes, I see. Miss Wayne, I'm going to ask you to wait outside for a few moments. I want to have a word with Mr. Tickle. I don't know anything about these thefts. I haven't stolen a damn thing in my life. Thank you, Miss Wayne. Have there been any thefts since Miss Wayne was suspended? Not as far as I know. There's been nothing reported by the security people. That's not so good. Well, what sort of a line do we take? At the moment, I really don't know. I have an idea that our only hope might lie in quis custodiet ipsos custodes. Yes, quite possibly. In business. And his championing of the underdog was hammered relentlessly at the public in his various newspapers day after day until the trial came on. But well, the result was an unimportant little case, which in the ordinary way wouldn't have got into the papers at all, was blown up into something resembling a state trial. And the court was packed to suffocation with three parts of Fleet Street. But well, the governor, in spite of his self-righteous remarks about publicity and the power of the press, reveled in every minute of it. Miss Wayne, your secretary, discovered that the insurance stamps were missing and you accordingly got in touch with your security section. But it's my view she didn't discover it. She knew all the time they were missing because she took them. I'm not concerned with your view about anything, Mr. Morley, unless I ask for it. Now, just answer the question, will you? Miss Wayne reported the loss to you. You got in touch with the security section. That's quite right. She made no attempt to conceal the loss. No. Thank you. Am I right in saying that on each occasion, the key of the drawer was, as usual, in its somewhat whimsical hiding place behind a tea caddy in an unlocked cupboard? Quite so. How many of your 2,000 employees knew that it was there? I have no idea, but it must have been someone with an intimate knowledge of the workings of my office, like Miss Wayne or... Or yourself. Well, must it? Surely anyone poking around with felonious intent could have found that key? Yes, I suppose so. Splendid. So that gives us 2,000 suspects. I'm very grateful to you, Mr. <laughs> yes, but the whole... Thank you, Mr. Morley. Mr. Bolton, please. My lord, Mr. Bolton has come from his sickbed to give evidence. He's still extremely ill, my lord, but insisted on coming. But perhaps under the circumstances, he might be allowed to give his evidence sitting down. By all means, Mr. Bradley. I'm obliged, my lord. Take the book in your right hand and read the oath on the card. I swear by Almighty God the evidence I should give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You may sit down, Mr. Bolton. Thank you, my lord. Mr. Bolton. Is your full name Henry Bolton, and for the past 15 years, have you been Chief Security Officer to the Addison Engineering Company at their London headquarters? I have, sir. Yes, and before that, had you served for 25 years in the Metropolitan Police, rising to the rank of Detective Sergeant? Yes, sir. A lead where you see fit. I'm sure I can trust you. My friend is most kind. Well, to cut a long story short then, Mr. Bolton, as a result of a series of thefts of valuables from various parts of your headquarters, and two thefts of insurance stamps from the cashier's office. Did you receive instructions to install a photographic device in the cashier's office? I did, sir. Now, what exactly was this device? It was a simple contact mechanism, sir, fitted to the drawer of Miss Wayne's desk. As soon as it was switched on, anyone opening that drawer automatically completed a circuit operating a concealed camera. How long was it before the trap was sprung on the photograph taken? Two months, sir. Now, just look at exhibit two, will you? Is that an unretouched print made by you, the photograph taken on that occasion? It is, sir. And is the negative now in police custody? Yes, sir. My lord, various copies have been prepared for the use of the jury. Uh, perhaps they could have them now. Yes, Mr. Braver. Go on. Mr. Bolton, does that photograph show the prisoner, Miss Wayne, in the act of taking something out of the drawer? It, it does, sir. I see. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Bolton. Mr. Bolton, I know you are ill, and I will keep you as little time as possible. Thank you, sir. After that photograph was taken, did you interview Miss Wayne? Yes, sir. Both with your colleagues in your office and later at her home, in company with Inspector Marsh of the Metropolitan Police? Yes, sir. On either occasion, did she say anything pertaining to the, the charge other than to deny it completely? No, sir. She's consistently denied it from the very beginning. I'm obliged. On the other hand, sir, she's never offered any reasonable explanation for her presence in the cashier office that Sunday, sir, or for her opening that drawer. I didn't ask you that, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. In any case, even after 15 years away from the police, you have surely not forgotten that there is no obligation for an accused person to say anything at all unless they so wish. I haven't forgotten, no, sir. No. You searched her home. You searched her locker at work. Yes, sir. You found nothing whatever to connect her with any of these thefts? No, sir. Tell me a bit more about these thefts. Where did they all take place? In various rooms in the building, sir, all over the building. And when? At night? Over the weekend? Uh, mostly during the day, sir. In the case of the insurance stamps, over the weekend. When the works were closed? Oh, they never closed, sir. Oh. Did you then check up that Miss Wayne was on duty on each occasion when a theft took place? Oh, no, sir. She couldn't have been. You see, the administrative offices are closed during the weekend. So she wasn't on duty? Uh, no, sir. But neither was she on duty at the time that photograph was taken, sir. Yes, I see. Uh, will you look at the photograph again? It shows Miss Wayne bending over a drawer in the act of taking something out, doesn't it? Yes, sir. What is that something? Oh, I suppose the cash box. In her statement, which is already before the court, Miss Wayne says she was collecting a parcel. It couldn't, by any possible stretch of imagination, be a parcel? Could be, sir. Uh, she told you she was going up to her office, didn't she? No, sir. I think, carefully, Mr. Belton, I want you to do yourself justice on this. On that Sunday, November the 16th, you were in the porter's lodge with Mr. Ambrose the porter when Miss Wayne arrived at the works, were you not? Porter's lodge, sir. I don't rightly remember exactly where oh, I was come, being. Oh, uh, come, come, Mr. Bolton. I'm calling Ambrose to give evidence on this point. You remember? Oh, oh yes, yes. I, I think I do remember, sir. Thank you. Then let's see if you can remember a little more. In due course, Miss Wayne came downstairs again. Do you remember that? No, sir. I must have left the porter's lodge by then, sir. I think not, Mr. Bolton. I suggest it was Mr. Ambrose who had left the porter's lodge by then to replenish his tea kettle, and that you were standing in for him at his rehearsal. Oh, that, that is true, sir. I did stand in for Mr. Ambrose, but Miss Wayne didn't leave it during the time I was in the porter's office alone, sir. That's very strange, Mr. Bolton. Because Mr. Ambrose will testify that she didn't leave when he was there. And I shall be calling Miss Wayne, who will say not only that she saw you there on her way out... That's not true, sir. I never saw you there. finish, will you, Mr. Bolton? I was about to say, but also that she told you about forgetting her parcel and you twitted her with the forgetfulness of woman. No, sir, that's not true, sir. It seems it's not only women who are forgetful. Don't you remember that she also said to you, you can relax for a bit because the stamps are still there? Didn't she say that? Didn't she? No, sir, she's quite wrong, sir. You're saying then, are you, that you did not know that afternoon that the drawer had been opened and the camera operated? Yes, sir. I had no idea at all, sir. The camera was examined the following morning. Who examined it? I did, sir. Oh, so you did know that there was a photographic device? Oh, certainly, sir. You would agree with me, then, that if, as she claims, Miss Wayne told you that afternoon that the stamps were still there, you must have known that the camera had been operated? But she didn't, sir. I don't recollect her saying anything of the I sort. I suggest, Mr. Bolton, that you have a very convenient memory that recollects only what you want to. That's not true, sir. And I, I further suggest, Mr. Bolton, that in the knowledge that Miss Wayne had opened that drawer and, unknown to herself, had operated the camera, you later went up to Mr. Morley's office and stole those insurance stamps yourself. No, sir. No, and As you no. stole every single item that has been reported missing from your firm's premises during the past six months. So I... Quick, catch it. Oh, Adams. Blood. That is the case of the prosecution. I don't think that witness had any business to be to uh, here at all, Mr. Braver. He must be got back to bed as quickly as possible. Uh, my lord, I believe a colleague of his is waiting for him outside who can help him, and I'm quite certain that the police will undertake to get him straight home by car. Very well. You say that's your case, Mr. Braver? Uh, yes, my lord. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Boyd. Uh, may it please you, my lord, I immediately call my client. Miss Wayne, would you go into the witness box, please? Uh, one moment, Mr. Boyd. I see that it's already at quarter past four. I think this would be a convenient moment to adjourn. Your Lord, your peace. Members of the jury, you'll please be back in your places at half past ten tomorrow morning.
Well, there it was at the end of the day. We'd done pretty well, much better than we ever dared to hope. But at the moment, we could only prove that Bolton knew the girl was in the office on that Sunday, and that didn't take us nearly far enough. However, it was here that luck came into the picture, or providence, you can call it what you like. All I know is, the girl's guardian angel started working overtime, and the payoff came the following morning. Yes, Mr. Boyd. Oh, Lord, please. Uh, my lord, I no longer intend to call my client. Very well, Mr. Boyd. Uh, Mr. Welsh, please. Take the book in your right hand and read the oath on the card. I swear by Almighty God, the evidence which I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Are you second in command to Mr. Bolton in the security section of the Allison Engineering Works? Yes, sir. Did you accompany Mr. Bolton home in a police car with Detective Sergeant Foster after he had been taken ill here in court yesterday? Yes, sir. Will you tell the court what happened on your arrival? On our arrival at his home, sir. He insisted that he was all right and could manage under his own steam. He was most insistent that we shouldn't help him into the house or go in with him at all. Oh. Did he give any reason? He said that he was all right and would only frighten his wife. So we helped him out of the car, sir, and let him go. But he collapsed halfway up his garden path. We got him to bed with the help of his wife and phoned the doctor. Just as we were leaving, Mrs. Bolton offered us a cup of tea and brought out a cigarette box and a, and a table lighter. Yes, are those there? Will you show them to me? Yes, sir. Uh, Lord, perhaps they could be marked as exhibits. Uh, they will be numbers six and seven. Uh, what can you tell us about them, Mr. Welsh? They, they form part of the property stolen from the Allison Engineering Company, sir. Yeah. And you produce a list of further articles found by you in a subsequent search of Mr. Bolton's house, also identified by you as part of the stolen property, and are these articles likewise in court? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Welsh. Yes, Mr. Braybar. I'm a lord. Uh, I'm in a little difficulty. Uh, yes, Mr. Braybar. You are, aren't you? Well, if the governor hadn't had a hunch about Bolton, and if his wife hadn't brought out the cigarettes, things could have been very different. Elizabeth Wayne was discharged, of course, and Bolton's trial comes up in a week or two. Only six months to run for his pension, too, and nearly 40 years of clean service. I just don't understand some people.